Now what is Taran? Taran is a small lake formed by the flow of snow or the water flown from the mountains. The shepherd is telling that his thoughts were boding. He did not have the thoughts free from boding. He had that evil sense, something evil is going to happen. There was no public road connecting that place and there were no dwelling. Dwelling means where people live, the place of residence. Hello everyone, this is Shobita S. Aradhya, lecturer, Department of English, Vidyashram, First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence. Hope you all are doing good. Today, we'll continue the poem, Fidelity, which is written by William Wordsworth. In the previous session, we saw that in the poem, Fidelity, the shepherd, he hears the sound of crying. He could not distinguish whether it is a dog or a fox. But later, in between the fern, he finds a dog, the vision of a dog at an instant and then he follows the dog. So what happens next that we'll be discussing in today's session. So let us start with the first slide. After the shepherd uh, finds a dog there, he also thinks whether this is a breeded one or is it wild dog. So what he feels and what happens next we'll see now. So. The poem is written by William Wordsworth, the poet who calls himself the worshipper of nature. It was a cow, a huge recess. What is cow here? It is a covered shelter. It was a covered shelter, a huge recess. Recess is a short wall, okay, so which is not completely built. It is a short wall that keeps till June, December's snow. What happens? The December snow will be on this recess, on that shelter on the cow till it is June. Until June, the snow will be melting gradually. A lofty precipice in front. Lofty, you know, lofty means very huge. And precipice means a steep rock. The rock which is very steep, okay. The slope is very sharp, the steep rock in front, a silent taran below. Now what is taran? Taran is a small lake formed by the flow of snow or the water flown from the mountains. So we see the tarns just below the mountains which are very small which is collected. The water is collected by the melting of the snow from the mountains or maybe the water flown from the mountains. A silent taran below, far in the bosom of Helvelin. What is this Helvelin? It is the mountain ranges. The name of the mountain ranges is Helvelin. Bosom of the Helvelin. What is the meaning of bosom? Bosom, if we take it as a noun, it means the chest of a woman where she feeds her baby, she nurtures her baby. That is the bosom if you take it as a noun. If it is a verb, it means very close. So far in the bosom of Helvelin, just below the head of the mountain ranges of Helvelin, remote from public road or dwelling. So this was a remote place from public road or dwelling. There was no public road connecting that place and there were no dwelling. Dwelling means where people live, the place of residence. Nobody lived there. There was no residential area surrounding that far from or the remote from public road or dwelling pathway or cultivated area. It was very far away even from pathway. What is the difference between pathway and public road? Public road, one which is constructed, which is built by the humans. And pathway is a road done or formed when people walk there or animals walk there. So it did not have public road or pathway to that place. And there were no dwelling and also no cultivated land nearby from trees of human foot or hand. So in the last session, I had told you this poem it uh, activates your sense organs. So here he tells food or hand. So food or hand means nobody had touched the plants there. Nobody had walked on the grass or on the mountains there. 
So let me explain the stanza here. It was a co, a huge recess. That co, the shelter or the wall, the short wall was covered with snow till June. The snow starts falling in the month of December and it was there till the month of June. A lofty precipice in front. Precipice is a steepy rock which has steep. Okay, so a lofty precipice in front. So the co uh, or the recess covered with snow and in front of it was a lofty precipice. A silent taran below. Taran is again a lake, small lake formed just below the mountain. Far in the bosom of Helvelin. Far. The Helvelin mountain ranges were seeming to be far from there. And from there also, from there till here, the region was completely remote. No people walked there. There were no human traces found. Remote from public road and dwelling pathway or cultivated land. No pathway, no cultivated land found there. From the trace of human foot or hand. Nobody walked there. Nobody had touched those uh, plants. Nobody has entered this region. The shepherd would come with his uh, sheep to some places there. But he also did not reach the place where the dog took the shepherd. There sometimes doth a leaping fish sent through the taran a lonely chair. So what is happening here? There sometimes doth a leaping fish. Leaping means which flies. You must have seen fish which come above the water and jump into water again. So they are called also a flying fish or leaping fish. They just come out of the water surface and get into water again. There are sometimes doth a leaping fish. Doth means do. Okay, it is the third person of do, the word do. Sent through the taran a lonely chair. From far uh, taran, it is sending some vibrations, the, some vibrations of chair. The cracks repeat the raven's crook. Cracks means here the rock face. Okay, the rocks, this part is called as cracks. Cracks repeat the raven's croak. Raven is a small bird and uh, croak here, it is a sound made by this raven's bird. Raven's bird, they are usually black in color. What they make sound is repeated by the cracks, means the rocks here, they repeat the sound made by the raven's bird. In symphony austere, symphony means, what is symphony? It is the musical composition. It is a long musical composition usually played by the orchestra. It is not by one uh, uh, vocalist or one musician. It is by the orchestra. So symphony austere, the whole orchestra what means here the raven is the only bird which is uh, making the sound which croaks and that is heard or that is repeated by the cracks. So this word is used symphony means who are the orchestra here? The singer is only one that is Raven's bird and the orchestra is the other rocks which repeat the sound. Thither the rainbow comes, the cloud and mist that spread the flying shroud. So here from the rainbow, from where it starts the rainbow. Thither means from somewhere. Thither the rainbow comes, the cloud and mist that spread the flying shroud. Here shroud means something which covers, like cloud covers the sun rays, right? So something which covers is shroud and sunbeams and the sounding blast. What are all covered here? The shroud, the clouds, they cover the sunbeams and also the sounding blast. What sound is made by the raven bird and which is repeated by the cracks and the sunbeam, the sunlights, all are covered by the shroud, flying shroud that if it could, would hurry past. If it could, would hurry past, would do it in a fast manner. But that enormous barrier binds it fast. The enormous barrier, what is the barrier here? Here we should understand the distance from the people, the distance from the dwelling area, the distance from the Taran, the distance from the Havilin mountain ranges. That itself is a barrier which has kept far from the people, far from the public.
okay so that barrier binds it fast okay so it brings them close only when we hear the ravens birds croak not free from boding thoughts here bored means a thought which tells that some evil is going to happen some evil is going to come to our life that thought comes no that is called as bored or boding not free from boding thoughts who is not free here the shepherd the shepherd is telling that his thoughts were boding he did not have the thoughts free from boding he had that evil sense something evil is going to happen or something bad is going to happen he had that feeling a while the shepherd stood so with those thoughts he was following the dog but he stood for a while while he stopped himself then makes his way over rocks and stones what he does then he makes his way over this is the short form of over okay over the rocks and stones so where all he is making his way through the rocks and the stones following the dog as quickly as he may how is he following as quick as he go because he was in a fear that he might not miss the dog he should follow the dog here we should understand one thing the dog knows that now this shepherd will follow me and the shepherd knew that this dog is taking me somewhere though they were not the owner and the dog of his but they understood the feeling so now the dog knew that if i go in this way he the dog can take the shepherd where he wanted to and the shepherd also felt the dog wants to show me something if i follow i'll get what he's trying to show me so he followed the dog as quickly as he could nor far had gone before he found so they did not go for a long distance but very near they found something who the shepherd and the dog what did the shepherd find there a human skeleton on the ground what did the shepherd found he found a human skeleton on the ground if it is a skeleton we should understand that the person had died long back it was months ago that the person has died and only skeletons are remaining the appalled discoverer with a sigh looks round to learn the history appalled means here who is horrified now the shepherd is horrified won't we be horrified when we see the skeletal remains of a person correct we start thinking what might have happened who this person might be why has he come here why did he die in this place why he was not uh, known to anybody why nobody knows why he died and how he died correct all these questions come to us so here the appalled discoverer is the shepherd the appalled discoverer with sigh sigh is a sound we make we relieve the breath and we make the sound is the sigh sound discoverer with a sigh looks around to learn the history what is he doing when he saw the skeletal remains of that person he looks round to find what could be the history how he must have died is there anybody with him or what is the dog doing so he tried to find out the history what might have happened he is trying to find it out and for that he is searching everywhere he is looking around from those abrupt and perilous rocks abrupt means sudden stop something suddenly stopped or and perilous rocks perilous means danger or risk perilous rock means these rocks were dangerous the climbing these rocks was risky the man had fallen that place of fear so this place where the perilous rocks where the dangerous rocks were there that was the place of fear some places some rocks will be very fearful if we go there it is sure that we'll slip okay so there the poet is trying to tell that that place was fearful because the rocks were not in the even surface so the rocks were unevenly distributed where we had the risk of falling down so now the shepherd is able to find out that 
From the abrupt, which was not complete, the rocks were cut or broken and the perilous rocks, the dangerous rocks were there. From there, the man had fallen. The man must have fallen from their place and that place was the place of fear for everyone. At length upon the shepherd's mind, it breaks and all is clear. So, at the length of the shepherd's mind means for to the level, to the extent, width and breadth of his mind he could think. After thinking all those, he uh, breaks and everything is clear to him that the person must have fallen from the perilous rocks and must have died here. He instantly recalled the name. Now the shepherd is able to recall the name. How can he recall? How did he come to know who that person was? Let us see here. And who he was and whence he came. Whence means from where did he come? Okay. Where is whence? Remembered to the very day on which the traveler passed this way. So now the shepherd is able to recall the day when a traveler passed that way, was walking that way. Shepherd had seen the traveler walking that way. So shepherd recalls how this traveler must have come here and he must have fallen from the rock. So he remembers that it was a traveler there. But here I wonder for whose sake this lamentable tale I tell you. So now the poet is telling for whose sake should I tell you this sad tale. Tale is a story. Lamentable means very bad or sad tale, sad story. For whose sake should I tell you the story now? A lasting monument of words, this wonder merits well. So what is left now? Only we can build a monument of words. The traveler is gone. But what can we tell now? What is the remaining thing that we can tell? What is that through which we can build a monument? Those are the words. About whom? About the dog and the traveler. The dog which still was hovering nigh. Hovering means flying in air or remaining in air. Okay. So what the dog was doing, he waited there. A few months back, the traveler had died, but this dog was with his master taking rounds there and waiting for somebody to whom the dog would show that my master is no more. He died. Somebody come and help my master. He could show. Okay. So that is hovering. The dog which still was hovering nigh, Repeating the same timid cry. What was the dog doing? He was repeating the same timid cry. The cry of helplessness. The dog was crying repeatedly until he got somebody who could see what had happened to his master. This dog had been through three months space. See, till here the poet has not mentioned when the traveler died. So, this is what the poet is trying to keep the suspense in the poem. This dog had been through three months space. How we get to know that three months? The shepherd remembered a traveler walking there, passing by that road. So it was three months ago. Three months space, a dweller in that savage place. So this was a wild place where nobody was living. There, the dweller, who is the dweller now? The dog is the only survivor there. So the dog has become a dweller there in the savage place, in the wild place where no one is living and only some animals live. In the next stanza, yes, proof was plain that since the day when this ill-fated traveler died, the dog had watched about the spot. So what is there now to make a monument of words? What is there which can be told to people as a story. What is that which makes the dog, the dog's fidelity known to everyone? That is what the dog has done. The dog had watched about the spot, which spot where the traveler fell and died. Okay. It is watching that spot or by his master's side. So where was this dog all these three months? It was around the master side. So where he died, it was taking care of that place. He did not leave that place for three months. How nourished here through such a long time, he knows who gave that love sublime. So how this dog nourished, how did this dog survive here? Who made it live here? Which is that the only thing 
which kept this dog alive was the love. Love by his master when he was alive. Okay. How did the master love the dog? Sublime. Sublime means unparalleled. Okay. You cannot compare it to anything else. So to that level, unparalleledly, the master had loved the dog and that love which the master showed when he was alive had kept the dog nourished here. The only thing which nourished the dog for three months to survive there was the love by his master and gave that strength of feeling great above all human estimate. So what feeling is given? That all these, whatever the dog did was above all the human estimate. We humans cannot estimate, we cannot imagine that what this dog has done. Was it possible to you people to imagine that a dog can do all those? If a person is died, dog can run to the people he knows and just inform them or take them to that place, something could be done. But when the dog and the traveler are in a a uh, strange place where they did not go any time. It is the first time they have gone. And what would the dog do? So this is above the estimation of human imagination. So this is what the poet is trying to tell us here. After this, let us discuss some question answers. What does the shepherd confuse the dog to? Of course, to a wolf or a fox. Correct? He could not distinguish whose sound it was. What does the shepherd find on the precipice? It was the skeletal remains of a human, a traveler. Later he found out that it was the traveler. What does the poet want us to imagine about the dead man? What he is uh, trying to tell us who was the dead man? That the poet wants us to imagine that the dead man was a traveler who journeyed to this place with his faithful companion. Who was the faithful companion of the traveler? Yes, it was a dog. Now, don't you think the title is apt to the poem? Yes, fidelity means loyalty, the faithfulness of a dog. The dog has survived there for three months for his master. If even that day the dog would not find the shepherd, don't know for how many days it would take again. But because of the shepherd, now the dog would tell what has happened. And about this poem, we can say that this is an imagination of the poet. So he has imagined a situation and has penned this poem. So this is all about the poem Fidelity by William Wordsworth. You also see that in this uh, poem or in any of the Wordsworth poems, you will see so many things about nature like the plants, the mountains, the terrain or the mountain ranges, correct? A bird singing, the cracks repeating, correct? All these are about nature. Only Wordsworth could imagine nature to like to that extent and could bring nature to us through his words. So a big thanks to Wordsworth and by this I end the poem, Fidelity and uh, Hope you all have understood it well. Thanking you. Have a great days in future. Good luck.